Mega Man is one of those gaming characters that kind of transcends the need for me to even explain who he is. Even if you haven't played a Mega Man game, you've probably at the least heard of him. Created by Dr. Thomas Light as a helper robot, he was quickly converted into a combat robot when Light's former colleague, Dr. Robert Wiley, stole and reprogrammed several of Light's robots. Mega Man uniquely has the ability to copy the powers of the foes he defeats, giving his games a rock-paper-scissors aspect to its progression, as some powers work better against some bosses more than others. Mega Man was a stable in the NES and Game Boy, with a total of 11 combined platformers between the two consoles, and while that slowed down a bit on Super Nintendo and PlayStation, both consoles still got at least two Mega Man games. The series would extend further out with several sub-series taking place in the same chronology, separated hundreds to thousands of years apart, like the Mega Man X and Mega Man Zero series. Personally speaking, Mega Man was the character that sparked my interest the most in the first Marvel vs. Capcom game. The Versus games pivoting towards Capcom characters in general instead of just Street Fighter meant that the developers could get a lot wilder with their roster picks, which gave us Mega Man. This wasn't Mega Man's first or even second rodeo in an arcade fighter though. He already had two arcade games at this point, though they're less fighting game and more so boss rushes. If this channel wasn't already a big indicator, I'm a huge fan of crossover games. KOF, Smash, Kingdom Hearts, you name it. One of my favorite things when it comes to crossover fighting games in particular is seeing how characters from outside of the fighting game bubble get adapted to the genre. It's an interesting design challenge for game designers to tackle, and I've always been fascinated by how they choose to interpret the characters. Mega Man is a prime example of that in this game, as they do some pretty generally expected things with him, but also decide to take him in some weird but awesome directions no other game has even dared attempt. His voice actor in both Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2 is Kairu Fujino. She also voiced his role in both games as well, and also provided the voice of Elena in Street Fighter 3 New Generation in Second Impact. There is a lot to talk about here, so let's get started. Mega Man's design in this game is based around the same general design he had in the mid to late 90s, specifically used in Mega Man 7 and 8. Probably because I played a lot of both games and Marvel 1 growing up, when I think of Mega Man, this is the version of his classic incarnation that comes to mind first. Mega Man 8 in particular informs not just his visual design, but some of his attacks as well, though his moveset does incorporate things from across the series. During any given fight, Rush tags alongside Mega Man, often running over to his position during a fight. Rush is a robot dog created by Dr. Light to assist Mega Man. He first debuted in Mega Man 3 and can perform various functions in the game like Rush Coil, which can springboard Mega Man to new heights. Mega Man's theme is an arrangement of the Mega Man 2 title theme. Mega Man 2 was and still is the most popular classic Mega Man game to this day, and its iconic opening sequence is a big part of that, so yeah, that tracks. One really interesting thing to note is that Mega Man is one of the only characters in the game to have a unique victory theme instead of the standard match win theme. This theme is of course the stage clear jingle from the original Mega Man games. Alright, on to his moveset. Mega Man's Heavy Punch is unique in that it's a projectile, and not just any projectile, it's his trademark Mega Buster. If you hold the button, he can charge this up for a bigger, multi-hitting charge shot. Mega Man first received the ability to charge his Buster shots in Mega Man 4. Mega Man's crouching heavy kick is his slide, which he was first able to utilize in Mega Man 3. Dragon Punch in any punch gives you the Mega Upper. This is an anti-air similar to the Shoryuken that debuted in Mega Man 2 the Power Fighters in the arcades. It was infamously brought back in the Super Smash Bros. series as Mega Man's up tilt attack 
with Sakurai specifically naming the Versus series version of the attack as its main inspiration. The Mega Man in Smash Brothers doesn't punch or kick a lot. The only real punch is the Mega Upper. Used in Marvel vs. Capcom, it's like a Shoryuken. Quarter circle back and kick is item change. Eddie comes on screen and delivers a weapon to Mega Man, though he actually has to make contact with the weapon to switch it. Which weapon Eddie gives you is dependent on the strength of the kick button pressed. Do note that if another Mega Man touches the weapon first, it'll change their weapon instead. Eddie is an assistant robot created by Dr. Light to deliver items to Mega Man. He first appeared utilizing that function in Mega Man 4. The Light Kick version gives you Rock Ball. The Medium version gives you Tornado Hold. And the Heavy version gives you Leaf Shield. To actually utilize these weapons, you do a quarter circle forward in punch motion using the same button strength to use the weapon as you did to summon it. The light punch version is Rock Ball, which ricochets across the screen when used. This comes from Mega Man 8 and is the first new weapon you acquire in that game. The medium punch attack is Tornado Hold. This can hit off the ground and is somewhat similar to Storm's Double Typhoon attack in the Versus games. You get this weapon in Mega Man 8 by beating Tengu Man. The heavy kick attack is Leaf Shield. Leaf shield. The shield circles around Mega Man and grants exactly one hit of armor before disappearing, but you can also fire it at opponents as well. Mega Man gets this in Mega Man 2 for beating Wood Man. Mega Man's first hyper combo is Hyper Mega Man. He fuses with Rush, Beat, and Eddie and takes on a giant form before unleashing a hellstorm of projectiles on your opponent. There's a lot to unpack with this one. Mega Man 6 introduced the ability to combine with Rush, which allowed him new powers like Limited Flight and the Charged Punch. In Mega Man 7, this got updated to Super Mega Man. That said, while this hyper combo seems to take that ability and run with it, its inspiration is actually a bit more, well, inspired than that. Hyper Mega Man is an overt reference to Mazinger Z, a Japanese mecha series. Note the design of the wings, it's a dead ringer for Mazinger. The missile launchers in particular might also specifically be referencing the original 1972 Popey Jumbo Machinder Mazinger Z figure which very specifically had dual shoulder mounted missile launchers. It's not the first time that the Mega Man series has referenced Mazinger either. One of Mega Man 6's late game bosses is named Matanger Z as a homage to the series, being styled after Mazinger's helmet. Mazinger Z is also more or less the originator of the rocket propelled punch you see in most media today, including the various games where Mega Man can do it himself, like the Hard Knuckle in Mega Man 3, the Rocket Buster in 7, or the Mega Arm in Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy. It's not the first time the Versus games have done it either. Cyber Akuma's wing design is an obvious homage as well, and hey, wouldn't you know it, he has a rocket punch too. Capcom seemingly loves them some Mazinger, and if you think this is a lot, wait till you find out how many games of theirs reference Getter Robo. His second hyper combo is Rush Drill, done with a quarter circle forward and two kicks. Rush transforms into a drill tank which Mega Man occupies. Wonderful. You can control and jump around with the tank temporarily until the end of the hyper combo. At first glance, this seems like a new riff on the aforementioned rush transformation abilities in previous Mega Man games. But in truth, this is a send up of perhaps one of the biggest anime influences on Mega Man as a whole, Tatsunoko's Neo Human Kashan series. Most notably, Kashan's robot canine Frender is the obvious inspiration for Rush though Capcom's actually shouted him out well before Rush even came to be as well. In Woodman stage in Mega Man 2, you'll encounter a blue giant robot dog that breathes fire. As it turns out, the official name of this enemy is Frender, in tribute to the Tatsunoko dog who also had the same ability. This little gag actually comes full circle in Tatsunoko vs Capcom, where Kashan is a playable character, and has the ability to summon Frender for specific attacks, one of which being a blast of fire breath. Took 20 years, but hey, that gag in Mega Man 2 finally got paid off somewhat. 
Friendler also has the ability to transform into different things, one of which is a red plated drill tank. Starting to get the picture? Mega Man's final hyper combo is Beat Plane, done with a quarter circle back and two punches. Beat is another robot companion that Mega Man can summon to assist him in battle. He debuted in Mega Man 5. Like Rush Drill, this move also homages Friender's transformations in the Kashan anime, this time being the plane that he can transform into that can drop missiles. You can control the plane and mash the buttons to spew out more projectiles. To bring this section full circle, the way the yellow V shape is oriented on his helmet during Hyper Mega Man is also more than likely shouting out Kashan as well. Here are Mega Man's colors. In the PS1 port of the game, Mega Man has two additional color schemes. And here's his ending. So, two things I want to bring up here. One, his ending is obviously homaging the weapon get screens from beating a boss in the Mega Man series, complete with a rearrangement of Mega Man 3's weapon get theme. Since he beat Onslaught, the game's boss, he gets his super magnetic shockwave because that's just how things work in Mega Man. It's a neat little win joke. That is, unless you're playing the PS1 version. If you save the game to the memory card after beating Onslaught with Mega Man, and hold select while choosing him in any mode afterwards, he actually gets magnetic shockwave as a usable hyper combo by doing a quarter circle back motion in two punches. I've talked about the PS1 ports of the series on the channel before, and they only got more interesting with each successive one, and this is definitely one of a few examples. Definitely something to talk about in a future video. The Marvel vs. Capcom Complete Works art book has some concept design sketches for Mega Man as well, including ideas for a slightly more buff design, reminiscent of how he appeared in the US box art for some of the later NES and Game Boy games, and a more human looking form for a potential win pose. The latter was scrapped because the artist couldn't find a way to make his limbs not look weird. There were also concept sketches for an attack that would have beat dive bomb opponents just like he does in Mega Man 5. Speaking of win poses, Mega Man can actually select his win poses in game by holding a button as soon as you win a fight. There's a few easter eggs associated with this. His heavy punch win pose is him playing rock paper scissors. There's set odds for which he'll end up pulling, but you can also hold a direction to guarantee a specific result. Left is rock. Mega Man, win. Right is paper. Mega Man, win. And up is scissors. Mega Man, win. He does a V sign pose with his light punch win pose, but there's a 1 in 16 chance of his body internals briefly being visible as he does this. However, if you hold weak punch and weak kick just as you win a match, he'll do it every time. When he's KO'd in a fight, he explodes the same way he does in his home series. <laughs> Mega Man's stage in Marvel 1 is Dr. Wily's military base, set in what looks like one of many possible manufacturing facilities Wily uses to construct his machines. It takes place in the daytime on a clear, crisp day. Though, the giant industrial smokestacks in the background cloud things up quite a bit. That can be good for the environment. To the far left, you can see a giant red W logo, Dr. Wily's emblem, which recurs throughout the classic Mega Man series and even in the X series in a certain Mega Man X5 boss fight. Wily typically tends to hold himself up and specifically build castles in every Mega Man game, which usually serves as the final set of stages. This base, if not a separate facility elsewhere, is likely one of these Wily castles. To its immediate right is a giant killer bomb enemy, seemingly being loaded up on a crane. Killer bombs are enemies first seen in Mega Man 1, most notably in Bomb Man stage. They advance on Mega Man in a wave-like pattern and detonate on contact. Behind it seems to be a row of other killer bombs, likely ready for dispersal. 
The killer bomb on display here seems to have a set of letters and numbers on it, probably a serial number, which are actually put on missiles in real life. Just under them, you'll catch a glimpse of Darkman 1. This is the first of the Darkman robots Mega Man encounters in the late game portions of Mega Man 5. It's carrying a sack of what looks like either sand or concrete, but doesn't seem to notice that the bag is busted until everything's already spilled out. It turns around in confusion before going left off screen to fetch another bag, which is also torn open. In front of him and closer to the foreground are a set of Bacones, an enemy that first appeared in Turbo Man stage in Mega Man 7 on the Super Nintendo. Strewn about the stage are Metals. Probably the most recognizable enemies from the series, Metals, or Mets as they're nicknamed, retreat into their helmets when threatened causing any weapons fired at them to harmlessly bounce off of them. Above them is seemingly an overpass into another section of the facility just off screen. There is also some loose wires hanging down, one of which seems to be exposed and possibly live. I'd say that's one hell of an OSHA violation, but I don't think OSHA carries any weight in the manufacturing plants of an evil genius. Speaking of, in the middle of the stage is the man himself, Dr. Robert Wiley. Wiley is the rival and arch nemesis of Dr. Light and the antagonist of the original Mega Man series as a whole, though his legacy would end up spilling over into the X Games as well. He stands in the middle of the stage with a megaphone and seems to be shouting orders to his robots, none of whom seem to have any interest in competently complying. Every now and then he'll stop and briefly stomp his feet in frustration before going back to barking orders. If you stand on the right side of the stage, he'll actually follow you and your opponent to that end of the screen as well. While in this game both Mega Man and Roar are pretty solidly based on the designs from Mega Man 8, Wily, who had a unique design in that game, actually seems to be more or less using his original design from Mega Man 1 through 7. He'd go back to this design in Mega Man 9 and 10, but his Mega Man 11 design actually incorporates the best of both designs and is my personal favorite look for Wily. Wily's created a ton of robots and committed countless evil acts in his time, though he's perhaps most notable as the person that created Mega Man X series Deuteragonist, Zero. Depending on what fighting game players you ask, creating Zero might actually be the most evil thing Wily's done. Behind him, and beyond the pipes pumping what I can only assume to be oil, seems to be a control room of some sort. It's possible that Wily uses this room to monitor construction, and that's further evidenced by the contraption to its immediate right. This appears to be another in a long line of Wily machines that Dr. Wily personally constructed. Wily machines first started being named as such in Mega Man 4, and generally serve as the machine Wily uses in his final boss encounters usually built to accommodate his personal UFO capsules. Wily's had a few machines, some more infamous than others, but the one shown in Marvel vs. Capcom actually seems to be a design original to this game. Every Wily machine employs a skull motif, but usually also have some kind of unique weapon associated with it. This one being built here seems to have a giant mace weapon it can use. That'll definitely hurt. There also seems to be mechanical appendages directly above it that, if I had to guess, was used in its construction. My guess is that Wily operates these appendages from a safe distance in the control room to work on the Wily machine. Over this area seems to be another, slightly lower overpass connecting a background area to somewhere just off screen, and in the middle of it is the Mad Grinder enemy. A damaged version of this robot appears in the opening stage of Mega Man 7. This one appears to be repaired and brand new, probably off to do some demolition. Finally, on the far right of the stage, there appears to be a giant dispenser of sorts with a bunch of Mets all bunched up in a pile under it. This is the Metal Potten, which first appeared in Mega Man 6. I think it was a really interesting call to have Mega Man's home stage in this game focus on this colorful cast of enemies instead. A stage revolving around Dr. Light and his creations would have been cool, sure. But as a Mega Man fan, I really enjoy getting some insight into the inner workings of Wily's fortresses when they're not mobilized for war, especially through the lens of a fighting game. Mega Man makes the transition into Marvel 2 relatively painlessly. There's only two things that get switched up here. 
Mega Upper can now be used in the air, and equipping Tornado Hold and Rock Ball requires different inputs. Rock Ball is equipped with a quarter circle forward and kick now, and Tornado Hold's equip is done with a Dragon Punch and kick. It probably bears mentioning that he does have an infinite in this game. I'm pretty trash at doing it consistently and can only manage through the 4 reps, but yeah. An assist that pops enemies into the air like Psylocke's anti-air assist or a BB Hood's projectile assist works best for setting this up mid-screen. Mega Man's first assist is the Charged Buster. His second assist is Mega Upper. His third assist is also the Charged Buster, but his Alpha Counter is now the Mega Upper instead of the Buster. Here are all of Mega Man's colors. You know, growing up, I always thought Mega Man's moveset in Marvel 1 and 2 was actually kind of underwhelming. I thought they could have went a lot harder with including weapons from past Mega Man games the way Smash Brothers would eventually do, but these days, I actually think this is one of the most unique incarnations of the character we've ever gotten. I think it's entirely appropriate that his moveset in this game homages a bunch of classic anime. Not only due to Mega Man games already doing that, but because it feeds into Marvel vs. Capcom 1 in particular, being a friendly clash of Eastern and Western culture as well. For as well as the designers represent everything Marvel related in the game, they did the same with the Capcom characters, but went the extra mile to include little details to send up the shows that inspired them as creators in the first place. Outside of this and the aforementioned Smash Brothers, he's occasionally popped up elsewhere. He was a bonus character in Cannon Spike, and was a Heroes vs. Heroes card in Marvel 3. He's also notably the only character in the Days of Future Past poster that isn't listed as apprehended or slain. Considering that point in time was a... rough period for Mega Man fans, probably best that they didn't kick the hornet's nest further. That's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I also want to thank you guys for 1k subs. Going from 0 to 1000 subscriptions in 2 months time still doesn't feel real to me at all, but I'm grateful for all the support nonetheless. Until next time, take care and stay safe.